Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead Pater with you. We're going to do a quick Q&A today. Testing one, two, three. I haven't had one of these on in a couple, several years. <laughs> this used to be the story of my life right here. I always had to run the wires up your shirt though. That was never comfortable. So, let me get set up here. I have promised a Q&A for like two weeks in my homesteading group, and today is going to be the day. I was going to do it out back where it's more comfortable, but the wind is tremendous. I was going to say awful, but it's tremendous. We're finally getting some nice weather. It's about 65 degrees, but it's very windy. So I'm getting a lot of questions that are coming in, so I'm going to do my best to answer as many of them as possible because obviously the, the, the quicker I can go and get to it, and the shorter my answers can be, the, the less time and better the upload. So let's go through this real quick and uh, say hey to everybody. And I hope your weather is breaking for you out there. Oh my gosh, a lot of questions. Okay. Um, first things first, people want to know what would I do differently if I, would, if I was starting again. I would move to a much um, more private and even more rural place than I live now. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, you have to do what works best for you in terms of, you know, you or your spouse getting to a job, um, you know, you know, homeschooling your children. Um, how does that affect, you know, the proximity of where you're at? Obviously, those things played a huge factor in where, where we are. But if those had not been such huge factors or we could have made it, um, you know, done a little bit differently, I would have moved. Personally, I probably would be living um, in the Harrogate area of East Tennessee. Um, that's really where I wanted to move to, uh, and it would have been extremely remote. So there you go. And uh, my sweet Patriot nurse <laughs> will appreciate that answer right there, because uh, you know they're all up there. So, um, okay, somebody's talking about how people have been living, uh, how she's seen a lot of surges and and whatnot in the movement of back to the land. Okay. Um, she wants to know what one thing would you tell new homesteaders, no matter what their age, to keep them encouraged as they begin the very first year of their journey. The very first year of your journey, you need to start out very small because the whole point of your journey is learning. You're trying to learn. So if you take on too many things at one time, um, things that, you know, that need a lot of time and attention, particularly in the animal husbandry arena, you can get overtaken very quickly. I mean, you know, if you're learning to can, you can take that in stride. If you're learning to make bread and bake bread, you're t you can take that in stride. Um, if you're working, self-defense doesn't necessarily work that way because once you start acquiring that, you definitely want to continue to work that. Um, but in terms of animals and gardening, you want to take that in stride because there's a lot of elements that you cannot control you can only work through. So always remember that. Um, what are the main things that a person starting a new homestead needs to purchase and focus on? Well, that's going to depend upon what you're doing. Uh, everybody has a different definition over, you know, whether they're, whether they have a hobby farm, whether they have an urban homestead, whether they're homesteading or whether they're homesteading with unicorns. So depending upon what you're doing is going to determine what things that you need. I can tell you that you cannot go too cheap on fencing. So let me tell you that right there because whether you have a garden or whether you are starting out with just chickens or maybe goats or whatnot, never skimp on fencing. Don't do it because you're going to be re you're going to be tearing it down and redoing it. So that's why we continue to, to add on to our fencing in phases. Um, so because we want to continue to do it the best that we can afford when we can afford to do so. Goals. Okay, homeschooling question. What's been your most used, your most used homeschooling resource? Well, I like a lot of hands-on books. I do not like to rely, isn't this ironic? I don't like to rely on the internet. Um, I don't think that it's something that we need to always uh, rely on in terms of it being there for us. So I like hands-on books. I use a mix of curriculum for all of my kids. Uh, we started out with more of a box type set, and then the second years we, you know, or as we, the year progressed, we moved up in something or changed something. Once you get your confidence in it and you, you get everything going in it, 
it tends to change. My favorite curriculum, I will tell you right now, from basically you know second grade all the way through high school is definitely Apology of Science. I do like Saxon Math. It does work very well here for us. If you have not looked into Knotgrass, uh, Knotgrass a lot, has a lot of different histories, Tennessee history, American history, all of these different things. They're fabulous too. So let me give you those hints right there. English is very, uh, you know, English and um, histories and th other histories or languages um, and different things like that have varied here. Even math has varied a little bit. We've done math, you see, I liked it. But um, pretty much apologia is, if I had to say, is rock solid with every kid. I'm definitely going with that one. It's very organized. Okay, LGD question. I have, um, okay, has a five-month-old. You have a baby. <laughs> have a five-month-old, great Pyrenees, 50 pounds, ball of energy. Of course, it's a baby. And when they hit about seven or eight months old, they're going to act like stupid teenagers. And then you're really going to be crazy. You need to really try to work with, uh, you need to go to live, learning about livestock guardian dogs on Facebook. Uh, Anna Abney and Miss Jamie, I was just talking to them yesterday. They are so excited to be coming to the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference. Can't tell you how good that's going to be. Uh, Miss uh, Jan Donor puts out some excellent books about different far farm dogs, uh, which is what are your livestock guardian dogs, what are your herding dogs, behavior management, all of these things. You have to remember you're working with a baby here. Um, you need to also be highly supervising this animal. This is not, you can't just throw these things out there and they're just going to start taking care of everything for you. It doesn't work that way. People don't like to hear that. People don't like to hear a lot of stuff. But it's true. You have to be engaged with this animal. So you need to get some really good books and you need to get into the LGD group on Facebook that I recommend. And you need to be patient. Uh, you know, I've had a setback with Cochise as of late, uh, you know, because he was neutered and it's kind of wooed him out. And, you know, you know, you have to constantly be reassessing, you know, do I need to train a little bit more in this? And do I need more supervision on this? And do I need to separate him from that for a couple of days? You have to revisit these topics. It doesn't just happen. And even if it does just happen, you're going to be bouncing back um, on it. Will I do gardening videos? Honey, I have a whole playlist on gardening. <laughs> Where are you at? I will be doing gardening videos. I haven't real. I haven't been doing any gardening. Uh, I've been throwing compost and things like that, um, and wood chips or whatever. But I right now is when I'm going to start. Probably, hopefully Monday. Um, pretty much where I live, we don't. I'm not going to be putting out my cool season crops for my spring until after St. Patrick's Day. Uh, you know, when it gets down to 17 this past week, it doesn't do you any good. And um, I don't want to have to replant things. And then I do not do any hardcore summer planting until around Mother's Day. And that's because of more frost coming in. We, we get it. Okay. We live in the mountains. So, okay. So, yes, there will be more gardening videos and check my playlist for sure. What is the best egg laying chicken to start with okay if you've never owned a chicken in your life and you only want hens to lay eggs for you i'm going to highly recommend which means you don't have any chicken experience so you know i'm on it and you want eggs i'm going to tell you get a golden comet or a black sex link i'm telling you they're easy birds they're friendly birds Excellent. Um, if, if you want the eggs, now if you're not looking for dual purpose and, and to get heavy into incubating eggs and all of that, if you're just wanting something easy peasy, you know, nice little companions, easy to take care of, good little personalities and more eggs than you can shake a stick at, I'm going to tell you, most definitely I'm going to tell you with my experience, I'm going to tell you the uh, Golden Comet. I'm sorry, I just, I can't find a bird so far that beats it. I'm testing some new ones right now, the Isa Brown, the Tetra Brown, and the Rainbows. I've got all of those in a brooder in here. And um, I have Amber Links, I have, I've had Production Reds, I've had Red Sex Links, I've had your Golden Comets, I've had uh, your Black Stars. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much running the gamut on all of these uh, Sex Links, and I can tell you the Golden Comet to this point is still my favorite. Golden Comet. Okay. What is the minimum you feel every household should have set aside in case of an emergency or natural disaster? As much as you can squirrel away. Um, I don't know what your finances are. I don't know what you do in terms of your budget. Um, 
anytime that you get a little windfall, I, I highly encourage you to do something smart with it. I do think you do, you know, consider always having a savings of some sort. That's important. I mean, Dave Ramsey will tell you that. Uh, in terms of a disaster, well, if you're talking about an SHTS scenario, you're going to be talking about a situation where, where, you know, you may not be able to leave the house, or what if the ATMs aren't working, or what if you can't get to the bank? My bank is 30 miles away. No joke. So, you know, you have to be smart and go, okay, well, you know, how much, you probably need a little cash on you. I get that. So, whatever you can do, and do it in small bills, because what if you have to, you know, I don't know. Think about all those scenarios. Um, da, 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 da. How did I get customers for my eggs? Well, my customer base has a lot to do with my, per with a personal side, a lot of friends, uh, friends of friends. It really grew for me because they can see how well I, um, well, take care of my hens as much as possible. And so I think people not only want quality food items nowadays, you know, they want more natural, they want uh, non-GMO, they don't want all of these antibiotics and all of these things in their food, but they want to know their animals that, they're, that, that, that they are consuming or that they are consuming from are managed very well. So if you're going to market yourself, you need to make sure that your animal husbandry is as good as it can get and as good as and plus 10%. And you need to market that. They need to see your hens. I have people on a weekly basis now asking to come and do farm tours here from Facebook groups to homeschooling groups to um, folks that are flying in for the conference, all of these different things they want to come do farm tours. I don't do that for separate, for privacy reasons, for biosecurity reasons. Hope you can hear me. Um, Hope you can hear me all of these reasons but people are interested in seeing a well-managed farm that's why a lot of these youtubers that are really big um, that really take care of their animals and love on their animals that's why they do well uh, a lot of times is because they're managing their farm and their homestead really well that's why they sell books and do all these cool things okay so what is my top favorite wait 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 Farm tools, honey, you need the best pitchfork that money can buy. Oh my gosh. If you've got one of those that only have so many prongs and everything falls in between, forget that. You need small prongs. Uh, good rake, a good shovel, a good hoe, a good pitchfork, a good trowel, um, you know, just things like that. And honestly, sometimes here comes my speed demon neighbor. Oh no, I've never seen that person before. Slow it down, buddy. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'll tell you, a, a good, a good, when I go out and I manage my animals, I have a, almost like a shepherd's hook that I use to make sure with my sheep, not my sheep, my goats, with my cows, uh, even bringing animals in if they have been uh, free ranging. Some of the simple things work really well too. It depends upon what your trimmers, really good trimmers, clippers. Um, you want to make sure you're keeping them well managed and cleaned, uh, you know, especially if you're dealing with issues with blight and whatnot. Um, how am I keeping my male goat from the females? Well, I'm not right now because I'm hoping, I'm going to scratch myself like an old bear. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to have babies soon. Right now, uh, I know that there's been some breeding, but I don't know if we've had uh, success yet. So right now he's just sort of hanging out with him. He's going to have his own spot. We've already talked about that and, and started that. Um, but as soon as we get through the conference, he'll be lit. He'll, he'll have his own space. He'll have his own bachelor pad. So that's what we're going to be working on. It's one of our projects. Um, does my barn have concrete floors? Heck no. Dirt floor. I, we clean it. We use DE. We put down pine shavings or straw. Uh, we use that as compost. Uh, it, you know, however we need to manage that. I don't want concrete floors. I don't want things slipping and sliding and peeping and hiding on concrete in my barn. Some people do. Some people don't. Just depends on what you got. Okay. Um, why do people buy chicks and incubate them? Well, I buy chickens because I want to keep my, you know, you buy new chicks because maybe it's a breed you don't have. You buy new chicks because you want to keep the genetics flowing with what you, do you see what I'm saying? 
you lose birds due to age or other reasons people do every day or you have to cull some um, so you want to keep an influx of new girls coming in um, and so therefore when they are mixing mixing it up uh, with a you know a new rooster or a different rooster that keeps the genetics more pure and, and, and flowing so that's why you would do both of those um, am I wild of edibles and foraging I really want to get more into that uh, my friend Jim Buckenmeyer love him great Appalachian homesteading conference I'm gonna tell you what right now if you're gonna be stuck out in the woods with somebody in terms of uh, surviving and knowing what to eat and use in an herbal environment you know as an herbalist and all of these things I'm telling you it's gonna be Jim uh, he takes it not only from an, uh, an herbalist standpoint but he has all of the knowledge and gain that you would need um, 18th century that's why these people could do what they did and 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 go across the frontier because they knew and that's what he knows so that is something I really do want to work on we do have th basic things around here that I do work with uh, but that is certainly something that I am personally very interested in um, and 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 am, am looking into I've got to get past this conference people <laughs> um, let's see oh my gosh um, what do I start my chicks on I start my chicks on a non medicated starter grower okay and we just go from there some folks will switch that over um, to another stage and then put it on layer put them on layer feed that's about 8 to 12 weeks and then put them on a, a layer around 18 weeks um, I actually just continue through because my um, my co-op doesn't offer the intermediate step and I've always just kept with it but I offer them a lot I'll start giving them different grains and let them go out in free range and supervised of course and offering other little natural scraps and uh, you know start getting it DE and things like that when I start hitting 15 16 weeks you know I really start really looking at the layer feed um, you know mixing that in switching that over you just don't want to do that too early it messes them up and so you really want to do that chicken vaccinations yeah do it I don't have a problem with chicken vaccinations um, I think that that is if you have the option to if you're buying brand new chicks and that's what makes you comfortable I think that's what you should do I think people need to operate and do what works best for their farm not based upon what some person says or does not do or, or whatever just because something doesn't does or does not work for somebody uh, does not mean that it will or will not necessarily work for you and just because somebody says something and they happen to have it in a, a book somewhere doesn't necessarily mean that that is going to work for you okay you have to look at your independent situation and be subjective to what you need to do for your farm what people do on a somewhere with seven chickens doesn't necessarily apply for what I do because I have we all know I have more than seven I have eight chickens so you know because of that I operate differently you will figure that out as you go along gather your resources gather your information and I'm gonna tell you experience will teach you your homestead will bend you to your knees if you're doing something wrong count on that how do I keep my kids socialized my kids um, did go to a homeschool co-op there for a while we pulled back on that um, my kids uh, we you know we go and do we do we have friends <laughs> we have friends they have friends back in Farragut they have friends way up in Crossville and up in Jamestown and uh, out in uh, on the other side of Crossville you know we have kids come over we go to family meets um, we do, does it seem like my kids with a mother like me they might be <laughs> non-social now my middle boy is he's, he's 14 now he is different than say my oldest and my youngest and me he takes after my husband he's a kind of a loner and he hangs out with his brothers and his friends and you know I get them out though I don't uh, you know I don't leave them just isolated in the house if we're going to co-op they're going to talk if we go somewhere to eat they're ordering their food if they got to go ask for something at a store I make them you, you they've got to get out and be willing to do and uh, you have to work with each child according to their needs okay 
What is the best animal to start with that's not too much work and being overwhelmed? Well, first of all, Miss Patty, you need to look and see what your restrictions are. If you can't have chickens, don't get chickens, okay? Maybe you need to look into getting maybe rabbits or quail, something along that line, whichever interests you. I'm not saying you should or should not. Um, chickens are honestly the gateway, in my personal opinion. Maybe ducks, maybe a couple of khaki Campbells would work good. I love my ducks. Oh. Miss Cora is out. Um, so, you know, you've got to think about what you're allowed to have and what you're interested in and why. You know, do you want eggs? Do you want meat? Whatever. Um, if you can go along the lines of chickens or ducks, I'm going to highly recommend starting with skip the quail. Um, you know, everybody and their mama has a, uh, a quail video and, and talks about how wonderful quail are. And I, I love my little quail. They're cute. They're like little, they're like little parakeets. And they have the cutest little eggs. And, and if you get about 12 of them, they make a mean omelet. But I will tell you that if you can house chickens, four chickens, um, the, the feeding is easier. They dust bathe. They might go broody. Um, I'm going to tell you to get chickens. Quail is very non-sustainable, in, in my personal opinion, in terms uh, of uh, a crisis situation. Um, so I'm going to go with something that is sustainable. That's why I have a mix of birds that I have. And I like to know, having a mix of birds, who's broody and who will hatch what. Um, quail are just really little. Um, the game bird feed is pretty expensive, more, much more expensive than my chicken feed. Uh, they can't free range. Um, you can go out and pick things for them, obviously. Um, you have to keep them dust bathing, so I supply mine with sand, so I have to go buy sand. Uh, you could use other things, but still. So I think that if you're starting out, I just really don't think some small, manageable hens, I think is the best way to go. That's what I think. And I just locked myself out of the computer. So let's hit a few more questions real quick. I'm trying to go fast on this one, guys, because I feel like I always miss. Um, how do I pick myself up when feeling discouraged, defeated, or unmotivated? Well, let me tell you what right now. I have, all, you know, you have things that happen on your homestead. Something dies or something didn't grow or maybe your cow did not get bred, which is what I'm waiting to find out. Um... And you, you, the homestead teaches you, the farm teaches you, you're, you're disappointed at that moment and you are humbled at that moment and you're disappointed at that moment. And then maybe a month or three months or six months later you find out, oh, well, it makes sense that happens now. Or, my gosh, if that had happened, this wouldn't have happened. There's a reason for everything that's going on. You're getting lots of lessons that you didn't expect, and you just you you just move, you just got to move on. You can't dwell on it. You you can't dwell on it. That's why we keep saying, you know, a lot of these skill sets that you're picking up on or things that you're doing take years to build and years to acquire, and your homestead takes years to set up because it's supposed to work in a flowing circle, okay? as much as possible. That does not happen overnight. You've got, I've, you, you've got folks over here that have a hobby farm. Because somebody was asking, you know, what, what's your, what do you tell people? Well, there's two types of people that are doing this. Some folks are doing it because they want a nice garden, a couple of chickens. They want to improve some skills and they want a, a better range of certain things they like to eat. They're tomatoes, they're peppers, they're onions. They wanna, they're learning some skills, but they know that those fresh eggs can't be beat, okay? You can't duplicate that at the store, we all know that. Then you have folks over here that are really motivated um, because of, they fear what's going on around them. Now that does not mean that because you're a homesteader that makes you a prepper, but I'm saying it could be a, a level of motivation. Should something go wrong, should a crisis happen, um, what about my kids learning? So they have a different set of motivation. So if you're over here on the level of acquiring skills, hobby farming, and don't, that's not a, don't, please don't take that as a knock. 
I mean, everybody, let's be honest here. When I lived in my urban homestead and I had a thousand square foot garden, I had four chickens, two plum trees, a really nice compost and beautiful herb gardens. It, it's not the same as what, what I'm doing now or what many of you even much bigger than me are doing. It is what it is. So use that as a level and an intro as understanding that this life is great and that it has so many advantages and you can really learn and teach your kids and the food I mean come on a homegrown tomato at the end of July does anything get better than that no you can't duplicate it and it's better for you it de-stresses you and you're connecting connecting to some roots but then you have over here we're going hardcore we're going big bad and we're going big or bold right so these folks over here that are in what I call the smaller genre, the non-stressing, the connecting to the roots, go slow. Because the minute you start taking on too many things, it's not going to be fun anymore. These folks over here that are going, just, I'm going at it, man. I mean, I'm, when I hit, they hit the ground running, which is great. But understand, it takes years to establish, so you can't beat yourself up. There's going to be so many things you need and so many things that you need to do and they are not free and they don't just you know puff the magic dragon bring them to you with a unicorn you know it, it, the unicorn there's no there's no unicorn okay it's all you okay i think i got most of these questions guys i'm going to break so i can get this uploaded to you thanks so much i hope you can hear me oh my gosh Hello, hello. Guys, I'm going to have a video coming up about the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference. So many of you are just, guys, it's going to be huge, okay? And we just announced uh, our, our final class. Um, uh, one of our final classes of Krav Maga, Israeli Krav Maga and Self-Defense by Noah Parkman, my own personal uh, instructor. He's from Knoxville. Folks, he's one of the best instructors in the nation. I'm not lying to you. you when you come and you see this man in action and talk with him, you're gonna be, your mind's going to just go pow. Everybody needs to understand the importance of self-defense. Ladies, you need it. All right, guys. We'll see you on May 6th. I'll see you on the Facebook group. Check it out. It's, I've got a bunch of requests I've got to go through. I know it. So I've got to go help my husband. He is uh, changing out the sink in there. So that's why I came outside because he was fussing. <laughs> And then we've got to go out and start working in the Back to Eden garden because I'm hoping to really get that going by Monday. It rained a lot, so it's really wet. So uh, we will see you. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Have a great weekend. What? Do you want me to come in and play with you? Ugh. I'm working, sister. I'm working. Yeah. <laughs>